You know, is anybody here old enough to remember when computer screens only came in black and white? <laughs> is anybody here old enough to remember rotary dial phones? Is anyone old enough to remember what mimeograph machine fluid smell like? You know, is anyone here old enough to remember polio? Well, the reason so many of these things sound so archaic, you know, and that they almost laughably archaic, is that we've been going through a period of exponential change. Um, this is a, a change that involves not going up in a straight line, but on a curve in which change is coming at us uh, ever faster. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with, uh, with one example of this, which is called Moore's Law. Um, there was a guy back in the uh, mid-60s named Gordon E. Moore, who was a physical chemist in, uh, out in California. And this was, he was noticing in 1964, this was five years after the first commercial uh, computer chip, that the number of transistors that you could get on a piece of silicon for a dollar had been regularly doubling every few months. And he boldly projected that this increase would continue uh, for another 10 years. Well, little did he know. This ended up becoming, Moore's, Gordon Moore ended up becoming one of the three founders of Intel. And he's now a bazillionaire many times over. But he's probably going to be most remembered for what is now known as Moore's Law which is now the core faith of the entire global information technology industry. And the way it's usually now stated is that the amount of computer firepower that you can buy for a dollar will double every 18 months for as far as the eye can see. Uh, now, that's an amazing prediction because it has major consequences. Uh, and everybody has experienced this. I mean, who hasn't looked at a whiz bang computer at Christmas time, you know, that costs $2,000 and it's got 512s of this and 60 gigs of something else and it's got, you know, just a multi core and it's a real fire breather. And the very next Christmas, that exact same machine is available for $1,300. And the reason that is, is because another way that Moore's Law can be stated is that the price of any given amount of computer technology will drop in half every 18 months on a curve. So this means that that fire-breathing $2,000 Christmas machine in 10 years will be available for $31.25 and you'll be able to get it free with a subscription to Newsweek and it will no longer be on the on your uh, desktop it'll be your cell phone uh, you know cell phones now uh, an iPhone today has more computer firepower than did the entire North American Air Defense Command in 1965 when Gordon Moore first prophesized uh, now this this business about this curve this change occurring on a curve this has a lot of practical implications to people's everyday lives. For one thing, it means that, that the last 20 years is not a guide to the next 20 years. It means that the last 20 years is at best a guide to the next eight. You know, if you want to look forward eight years, then think about where you were 20 years ago, and that's about right. And the last 50 years is not a guide to the next 50 years it's at best a guide to the next 14. And so, you know, when you're starting to think about what the future holds, you know, if you think that the future is going to be something like the past, well, that's about the one thing you can confidently say is not going to happen. Um, the one, now, this curve is nothing new. It's been going on for a long time uh, throughout all of, of evolution. Uh, I mean, if you look that at the first uh, or organisms um, to the first mammals, that took about 400 million years to get from the first organisms to the first mammals. To get from the first mammals to the first monkeys took 150 million years. From monkeys to chimps took 30 million years. See how this is shortening? From chimps to walking erect took 16 million years. 
from walking erect to painting on cave walls in France took about four million years. From painting on cave walls to first settlement, fixed settlement, took about 10,000 years. See how the pace is picking up? And then to writing took about 4,000 years. Now that is all biological evolution. That's what Darwin was interested in. And even that was, was the, pick, the pace was picking up. But when we started to be able to write and have fixed settlement, then evolution kicked into an entirely different phase. It's cultural evolution because we had a brand new way of storing and sharing and collecting our ideas beyond our little tribes and to the, you know, the rest of the species. Well, as soon as you kick into cultural evolution, the pace really begins to pick up. Uh, from writing to the Roman Empire takes about 4,000 years, to the Industrial Revolution takes about 1,800 years. From the start of the Industrial Revolution to the first flight, the Wright brothers took 100 years. And 66 years later, we're on the moon. You know, and 20 years after that, we're in the information age, wondering what the hell we've done here and whether this is a good idea after all. And of course, what's interesting is that as as you enter this information age, this is where you start getting engineered evolution. This third phase, first biological and then cultural, and now engineered evolution, or what I call radical evolution. And this is the point at which we start taking control of our own evolution through our own technologies. And this engineered evolution is uh, really what I'm interested in.